Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So today we're going to be setting up um, Snort on PFSense. Now in this case for the video, I've went ahead and I have my PFSense install. It was a community edition and then I just moved it to a PFSense Plus instance um, from the documented procedure. But um, it doesn't matter at least as of right now. Um, let's see what it's... Uh, uh, March 23rd of 2022. At least as of today's date, um, the procedure is identical for PFSense Community Edition and PFSense Plus. Same thing if you have an appliance or just a virtual machine, whatever you may have. But anyway, from our dashboard, we're going to go to System. We're going to go to Package Manager. And then under the Available Packages tab, let's search for Snort. And then there we go, we want to install this package here and confirm this. And then that will go ahead and install the Snort package for us and get everything set up. All right, and that's what you want to see. You do want to make sure it's uh, successfully completed. And now from here, if you want to be uh, quicker about it, you can go right to the Services tab and to the Snort service. So let's quick go into there. So what Snort does? is it captures packets and, and what that means is when packets are coming through the interfaces of your PFSense firewall what capturing them means is that you're essentially making a copy of them and you're putting that copy in the RAM of your system and then Snort as a program is analyzing those packets for anything that may be malicious um, or out of the ordinary for a particular protocol um, in the confines of that protocol's rules. Um, in addition though, it can actually be extended to be whatever kinds of things you can think about um, that you may want to detect. So you can customize this much more than what we're going to get into, um, especially if you have the snort rules. But anyway, in order to capture the packets, we have to first, under the Snort Interfaces tab, we need to hit Add. And to begin with, I am going to capture packets on LAN, the LAN interface. And sometimes you have to change that. I don't know if everyone experiences that, but every time I've done this, I've had to change the name of that. Now, for alert settings, we don't usually have to care about any of that. Um, there are some times where you may want to, but we are fine leaving that um, as it is. Block offenders. Um, this can be good or bad. Now, in some environments, you definitely want to stop traffic from specific IPs um, that have been found to be violating rules or, or things of that nature. You might may not want them flowing through your network anymore, but um, nine times out of ten, at least for Right now, we're not going to block offenders, but if you do want to do that, you just can check this box, and then you can have some options there. It's uh, super easy. Um, detection performance, you don't have to touch anything there. And your home net, you can leave default, and external net, you can leave default, unless you know you want to change those for some reason. But with, with that, that's the main thing you need to do to enable it on an interface. Choose the interface, make sure it's the right one, and hit save. So now if we go back to Snort Interfaces, we can see we have one interface here, and it's LAN, and because we did not enable blocking, uh, blocking mode is disabled. Now, to actually edit this a little bit uh, further, we can go here, and we haven't downloaded rules yet, but we will uh, get there. Um, th this will, will show a little bit once we're here, but under each interface you're going to see this here. And <clears throat> essentially once we download the rules, you're going to see more information there. But I wanted to point out the preprocessors, because some of these, uh, what a preprocessor does in Snort is um, it understands how a protocol is supposed to operate, like SSH or HTTP or SMTP. And when something doesn't operate correctly in the protocol or something looks suspicious, it can actually 
um, inform you about that as an alert. But the reason I haven't downloaded the rules yet is I wanted to show you these are built in. You, you don't actually have to have a rule set external for them. But some of these are all built into Snort. Same thing like with the port scan detection. These are all uh, built in rules. But 99% of the time you are going to want an external rule set, not just these preprocessors. But these are very helpful for detecting things that maybe are not in a rule set currently. Um, that's one of the most important things about preprocessors. So now um, we're going to go ahead and download a rule set and we'll talk about how to get that set up. Alright, so under global settings, here is these different external rule sets you can choose. Now a rule set is nothing but um, a text file that has rules in it and Snort loads them up and can use them to help it process packets. Now you have the subscriber rules, you have free and open source rules there, emerging threat rules, source fire, open app ID detectors, some tracking rules for botnets, and of course the rule update settings. So real quick, usually I pick 12 hours. Um, it Honestly, you can pick whatever you want um, within what we have to select from. Now, if you don't want to register on snort.org and get um, a code for that, you can actually just check this box and then you can just save and download the rules like that. But I do want to show you how to put the code in and download uh, those rules. So one second while I grab the code. Okay, now we're going to, under the Snort subscriber rules, we're going to check this box. And under Snort Winkmaster code, we're going to go ahead and paste the code. And after that, I'm going to scroll down. And another thing, remember about blocked hosts? If you do want to remove those, um, you can check how often you want to flush that uh, rule set. All right, that's blocking them. Um, so do keep that in mind. But we do want to put the code in if you want to register on snort.org um, and hit save. After you've hit save, we want to go to updates over here. And then what you want to do is update rules under update your rule set. And then we're going to go ahead and let this run. Depending upon how many rule sets you selected for download, this can take quite a bit of time. And it depends on things like your hardware and your internet connection, of course. All right, so now that those are downloaded, this is what you want to see. Um, preferably the current date, um, depending on when you've updated them. But you want to see result success. And now that uh, those that one rule set is downloaded, we're going to go to Snort Interfaces, and under Edit, let's go to, let's see here, LAN, LAN Categories, rather. Now, what uh, this has is all of the sets of rules, quite a few um, of what we just downloaded. Now, what you can do is you can select, like, let's see, if we just want to look for backdoors, we could just select um, Snort backdoors. And if we want to look for things, if we're running an email server in the network and we want to look for IMAP uh, problems or exploits, you could just select that if you wanted. But the, the takeaway is the more rules you select at one time, and um, especially if you select those same rules on another interface in addition to like our LAN interface, because you can capture on multiple interfaces at one time. The more of those you do, you also have to keep the rule sets in RAM in addition to the packets you're capturing. So the more, in general, interfaces you want to monitor and rules, the, the number of rules you want to have um, active at one time, that's going to be dependent on how much hardware resources you have. But the easiest way to get started with all of this is use a policy. So we're going to check Use IPS Policy. And you can choose from Connectivity, Balanced, Security, and Max Detect. I recommend Connectivity. Um, 
you know, as it says there, it is the best for detecting the threats of the day, but you're minimizing false positives. So when you're tuning things, it uh, will save you some time there as well. Um, in addition to resources, because what that actually means is it's detecting, it, it's selecting rather, a subset of the rules. So if you put it on max detect, it's going to detect, it's going to load up at all rules that are available, essentially. But uh, you may run out of RAM in that case, and then you're not going to be able to use this very well um, at that point. It's just going to um, kill the process. But we're going to save this. And I never remember if um, the one on the top does the same thing as the one on the bottom. I think it does, but just to be sure. So now we've saved it. I'm going to go back over here to Land Settings. I'm sorry, Snort Interfaces. And we're going to go ahead and start Snort on this interface. And we're going to let that load up. And now Snort is running on this interface. And if we go to Diagnostics, uh, Command Prompt, you can tell if you just do PSAUX and then Rep for Snort. And then you'll be able to see in the output that Snort is running. And if we look, it's running on the LAN interface and everything like that. So that is the main uh, rules for that. And um, now that is running. But what happens now if we may want to do other things? Like, what if we want to have another interface with another rule set on there? Well, we're going to go into that next. All right, so now in regards, though, to the amount of RAM we have available and things like that, um, if you are having trouble, you can go to the interfaces and go to whatever the interface name is, rules. And then if you go down all the way to the bottom, you can actually see you have total rules. And in this case, with just the with the combination of subscriber rules that I downloaded and the connectivity policy selecting groups of rules from there, we have 97 rules and they are enabled. All right, so you can see though, you can also disable them and you can define other rules as well. But that's a good way to know um, if some of it that you may be having trouble with is because of the amount of rules you have. So if what if we want to have another interface where we want to not use a certain rule set on it particularly, but maybe we just want to use something like detecting port scans, or maybe just our um, open app ID rules or something like that. So let's handle the case where we want to do port scans. Uh, port scan detection. Let's go in there again, add interface. We're going to add WAN this time, and we're going to save it. And then under preprocessors, we're going to go ahead and Under port scan detection here, we're going to check this box here for port scans, and then save, and then we're going to go back and start that on the interface. Now, because I didn't actually enable another rule set, but anything but that, you see there's no rules enabled on the WAN interface, even though there was 97 on the LAN interface. Um, that's part of what we can do to uh, prevent, you know, overload of the system. If It's kind of like that with our interfaces and our rule sets. So sometimes, you know, we want only, as I said, port scans on the WAN. Or we want some other detection on the LAN. But the last thing we're going to do to show more of it is I'm going to add another interface. And we're going to only add open app ID rules to that interface. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so we, I, we went ahead and I added that interface. And now we're going to go to, let's see, global settings again. But instead, I'm going to use Sourcefire Open App ID rule sets. We're going to check this. And we're going to download the rules. And from there, we're going to hit save. And go to updates and run the updates again. All right, so now we have our Open App ID and the Snort App ID uh, open text rules. Those are now both downloaded. But now when we go back to Snort Interfaces, and we're going to go ahead and add another interface, I made guest 
And let's go ahead and save that like before with the other two. And now, if I go to Guest Categories, and this time, I don't want to use an IPS policy like I used on the WAN, and I want to do more than just check the uh, the report scans and things. So we're going to go through here and check the Open App ID rules real quick. Alright, so bear in mind, only the Open App ID uh, rules are, are selected, and we do not have Use IPS Policy selected. So we're going to scroll down, hit save. Alright, so now that the Open App ID rules are the only ones selected, and under Preprocessors, um, we've enabled the application ID. Under Alerts, under that interface, now you can see, in this case, the applications from one of the clients on the side of that interface. All right, so the, the same thing though, that now we have open app ID alerts and that's it um, in this configuration for this interface. But on the WAN, if there was port scans, we would see only the port scan information. So I hope that makes sense though. So you can have different interfaces um, have different snort rule set configurations. But with all that though, that's a little bit about how to configure snort on PFSense. Um, I do hope it was helpful and I hope you learned something. And as always, it's been Tyler with T-Tech and have a nice day.